Welcome back. Peace and love to you all. Today we're going to be talking about a very, very special individual and a very important individual. If you never heard of Nikola Tesla, then you have a lot to learn today. And this is going to be a very thorough and extensive video with many revelations. So those who stay with me to the end will be in for a lot of eye openers. But before we go deep into that rabbit hole, let's start at the surface and let's just get some basic information about Nikola Tesla and who he was. So Nikola Tesla was born on July 1856 and passed away on January 1943. He was a Serbian American inventor, electrical engineer, mechanical engineer, physicist and futurist best known for his contributions to the design of the modern alternating current or the AC electricity supply system. Tesla gained experience in telephony and electrical engineering before immigrating to the United States in 1884 to work for Thomas Edison in New York City. He soon struck out on his own with financial backers setting up laboratories and companies to develop a range of electrical devices. His patented AC induction motor and transformer were licensed by George Westinghouse, who also hired Tesla for a short time as a consultant. His work in the formative years of electric power development was involved in a corporate alternating current slash direct current war of currents, as it became to be known as the war of currents. And this was between AC versus DC alternating current versus direct current. And it also encompassed various patent battles. Tesla became a naturalized U.S. citizen in 1891. He went on to pursue his ideas of wireless lighting and electricity distribution in his high voltage, high frequency power experiments in New York and Colorado Springs and made early pronouncements on the possibility of wireless communication with his devices. He tried to put these ideas to practical use in an ill-fated attempt at intercontinental wireless transmission, his unfinished Wardenclyffe Tower project. In his lab, he also conducted a range of experiments with mechanical oscillators and generators, electrical discharge tubes, and early X-ray imaging. He also built the wireless control boat, one of the first ever exhibited. Tesla was renowned for his achievements in showmanship, eventually earning him a reputation in popular culture as an archetypal mad scientist. He lived most of his life in a series of New York hotels through his retirement, and most of his work fell into relative obscurity after his death. Tesla was also very gifted. In some people's opinion, he was superhuman. He had the ability to very precisely recall images and objects. This enabled him to accurately visualize intricate 3D objects, and as a result, he could build working prototypes using few preliminary drawings. He really worked out his inventions in his imagination, Carson told Live Science. And I'm just going to stop right here and iterate the fact that when we say that he worked out his inventions with his imaginations, I teach a lot of information on his channel about going within to create results without. Every human being was already brought to this earth with everything within them to liberate themselves. And it's just about them going within and knowing thyself because everyone has something special to offer that is of value. So basically, anything and everything with any form of wireless technology can be attributed to Nikola Tesla. Everything from those first remote control cars we used to enjoy to your cell phone that you love so dearly today. Sending wireless signals is not a new thing. As you know, our world just recently became wireless. But what if I told you that the world was already wireless in Tesla day? And in fact, the symbol we use for Wi-Fi today is none other than the Tesla Tower. And that's kind of ironic when you think about it, that the people who capitalized off of stealing and plagiarizing from Tesla's inventions now use the Tesla Tower as today's symbol for this modern Wi-Fi technology or not modern. What if I told you 
It existed even before Tesla and that it was ancient technology. You see, the Tesla Tower can't be attributed solely to Tesla because even prior to him, the concept can be seen in many mushroom mythologies. Again, the ancients had science just like we have today. They had electricity and they had everything we have today, even Wi-Fi. The pyramids was a form of Wi-Fi technology and one of their uses would have been similar to the same way we use cell phone towers and things today. As we get in the middle of this video and we get into Nikola Tesla and his flat earth philosophies, you will understand the basic principles of his technology and why I say the ancients also had this very simple technology that everyone can tap into and this is what Nikola Tesla wanted to share with the inhabitants of the earth that energy was infinite and that earth was a realm not a planet but again we'll just start from the surface and then we'll work our way deep into the rabbit hole so let's continue the son of a Serbian Orthodox priest who rose to the rank of Archbishop Tesla had the opportunity to study a variety of topics contained in his father's personal library. As a young boy, he accompanied his father on trips to Rome, where he was able to study the lesser known works stored in the Vatican's vast scientific repository. So understand that Tesla, because of who he was and who his father was, he had access to a lot of top secret information that many of us would never be able to access information belonging to the Vatican Science Department. Tesla knew what they was hiding and the simple truth, the knowledge of the ancients. And Tesla knew this because Tesla, in case many of you didn't know, was a shaman and he did know about shamanism. And if you research shamanism, you can see that a lot of shaman symbols resemble a lot of the technology that Tesla used. So again, the ancients was aware of this same technology. So did Tesla discover this technology? No, Tesla rediscovered it. So let's continue. After working for Edison Telephone Company subsidiaries in Budapest, Paris and other cities throughout Europe, Nikola Tesla went to America to meet the man whose company gave him his first job, Thomas Edison. Tesla found it difficult to work for Edison due to Edison's reneging on financial promises, but soon found backers to finance his research and development projects and his new inventions. Over the years, as more and more people begin to recognize the game being played in our society, Nikola Tesla and his story has been becoming more and more popular. This is natural as the increase in people educating themselves outside of the education system leads them to amazing bits of information that otherwise stay hidden. Much of Tesla's life's work was about providing for the world free, zero cost energy, which Tesla envisaged would be broadcast wirelessly through the air or through the earth itself with no need for power lines. But despite years of trying, he never obtained the funding to achieve this. He really had a vision to free the world of its problems and just like many of you who are subscribed to my channel, I know myself sometime I think about the world and I say to myself man I just wish things were the way that the creator intended and we play a role in making that happen but we've been crippled with religions that teach us we have genies in a bottle that never show up and the only way they show up is on the battlefields of bloody war and that's the only way they've revealed themselves throughout history so the mind of the human is very valuable and if we would use our science to reconnect with nature as Tesla did, we could create heaven on earth. A lot of religious people are against that concept because they teach that the earth is cursed. But as we move on in this video, you will understand why Tesla's visions and rediscoveries were so important and why his philosophy and who he was and his reemergence at this time is so important. So understand that it has long since been rumored that Tesla invented or developed a significant number of electrical and electronic devices which were decades ahead of their time and would have been special interest to U.S. military and intelligence circles. 
around 300 patents were issued to Tesla in 25 countries, many of them major and far reaching in concept. Financiers such as John Pierpont, J.P. Morgan, George Westinghouse and John Jacob Astor were among those who saw the potential in Tesla's pioneering entrepreneurial spirit to capitalize on his technological discoveries in electricity while his communications and physics was very strong once a lot of his ideas was stolen a lot of the credit was given to imposters to hide the truth about who tesla was and what he represented to our earth and to humanity what he tried to do he tried to free everyone from this modern form of slavery someone is selling you power Remember, power is infinite. The creator created everything with power. It's all around you. Power literally exists in every molecule of existence. And someone is selling something that's infinite because the tools that are used to generate power can be attributed to Tesla and the ancients. And anyone can make these tools and generate power for themselves without paying. But today it would be against the law because of a lot of these deceivers and financiers who played a part in murdering Tesla and seizing a lot of his books and his writings and science. And today they have brought them to fruition and turned the world to consumers. But Tesla wanted to turn us all to victors and liberated human beings. Tesla's many technological discoveries were certain to have drawn the attention of those hungry for world domination and superiority. And they have so much more control today than they did in Tesla's day, equipped with all of their new technology and trickery that they create the matrix with. But by and large, Tesla's inventions and his career were excluded from our history books because his inventions and patents were stolen and then weaponized. It was never intended for us to learn about the suppression of Tesla's advanced scientific discoveries, nor about those who profited from their theft, the orchestrators of the master plan. Though much has been written about Tesla's success and failures, few have detailed the behind the scenes financial activities which disclose a Nazi plot to acquire his technology while research and development costs had largely been paid unknowingly by U.S. taxpayers. Many of Tesla's patents fell into Nazi hands prior to and during World Wars I and II. As a result, Tesla continuously found himself in litigation over patent rights and other issues. Although he had succeeded in winning the majority of his patent lawsuits, his technology had been repeatedly stolen and sold to the German Nazis and other foreign governments, so he never achieved the financial success he deserved. Nikola Tesla was beyond a doubt the greatest genius of the 20th century. Our way of life today, the technology that we take for granted, is all possible because of this one incredible man from Europe. However, despite all of his contributions to science, his name is little remembered outside the field of electronics and physics. In fact, Thomas Edison is often mistakenly credited in school textbooks with inventions that were developed and patented by Tesla. Because of Tesla's financial troubles throughout his adult life, he was forced to move from hotel to hotel. He would often leave trunks of documents behind as security for his debts. When you think about this, a lot of teachers go through this. It's really sad because if you think about what Tesla tried to do for humanity and what he knew and how valuable his brain was at that time and the lack of support that he had from the people, who he spent his whole life dedicating his teachings. See, we look for help in all the wrong ways. We look for the government to show up and give us handouts. We would look for these people's help who got us in bondage in the first place instead of saying, hey, you can help us by not charging me for energy and power because that's supposed to be free. You want to help humanity government? Forget your handouts. How about you stop charging us for stuff that is free of nature like water and energy which is all around you and this is what Tesla offered to humanity. 
but because he had the lack of support from humanity you can see that he had so little support that in order to support himself he had to sell a lot of his knowledge to these deceivers just to have a roof over his head so again tesla will leave behind trunks of documents as security to pay his hotel debts and these trunks which were eagerly sought after tesla's death have become the key to unlocking the mystery of who nikola tesla really was and the incredible life that he secretly led when tesla died on january 7 1943 at the age of 86 representatives of the office of alien property at the request of the fbi went to the hotel new yorker and seized all of tesla's belongings two truckloads of papers furniture and artifacts were sent under seal to the manhattan storage and warehouse company this load was added to the almost 30 barrels and bundles that had been in storage since the 1930s and the entire collection was sealed under orders from the oap you know it's mighty ironic that they would seal tesla's belongings and seize it after they murdered him and that it would go to the office of alien property because what you will find later is that a lot of tesla's inventions they ended up attributing those inventions to alien technology just like they do with everything else just like they do with the pyramids they can't do nothing new when they don't want to credit someone something they give the credit to aliens tesla connects with adolf hitler and the vamana did a video on the vamanas check that out because this ties into some of tesla's technology so there's a connection there and there's a cover up that happened during this time frame and the matrix that we are in today was being created during these years around from the early 1900s on up to today even the late 1800s but like i said this stuff go all the way back to the ancients so we will tie it all in as we move on so just to investigate and get into a lot of more details of what exactly happened to Tesla's work during these raids, I am going to a website called bibliothecopeliades.net. The link to this website is in the description. I'm just going to go over a few interesting points they made here and iterate on it just so we can go deep into this rabbit hole so after tesla's death there was a scramble by the united states government to find all of his papers notes and research before other foreign powers could find him tesla's nephew sava kasanovic reported that before the oap had arrived someone else had obviously gone through tesla's belongings and took an unknown amount of personal notes and papers it was known by the FBI that German intelligence had already spirited away a sizable amount of Tesla's research several years before his death. This stolen material, it is thought, would eventually result in the development of the Nazi flying saucer. The United States was going to make sure that this would not happen again. That Nazi flying saucer later became the Vamana mythology. Of course, there's a lot of advanced technology we see in our world today, but a lot of this stuff, as it is told through the myth, has been beefed up to support a lot of spookism in Hollywood movies. A lot of it is stolen and plagiarized ancient concepts. Again, nothing is new. Anything even remotely associated with the great man Tesla was quickly confiscated and lost within the secret networks of pre-World War II America. Nevertheless, more than a dozen boxes of Tesla's belongings left behind at hotels like the Waldorf Astoria, the Governor Clinton Hotel, and the St. Regis had already been sold to salvagers to pay off Tesla's outstanding bills. Most of these boxes and the secrets they contain have never been found. In 1976, four undistinguished boxes of papers were auctioned in the estate sale of Michael P. Barnes. Little is known about Barnes except that he had been a bookseller in Manhattan. This auction took place in Newark, New Jersey with the boxes and their contents being bought by Dale Afri for $25. Afri had no idea what was in the boxes when he bought them on a whim. 
When he later went through them, he was surprised to find what appeared to be lab documents and personal notes of Nikola Tesla. Some of the lost papers of Tesla had once again resurfaced. However, due to ignorance, they were almost lost once again. In 1976, the name Nikola Tesla was not widely known. Afri had little idea of the importance of the papers he now owned. Going through the incredible amount of material, Afri at first thought he had uncovered the notes of a science fiction writer. What he read was so incredible that it seemed impossible that any of it was true. Having little interest in what he had bought, Afri stashed the boxes away in his basement thinking that he would go through them again later when he had more time. Twenty years passed before Afri would once again find the time to open the strange boxes. Unfortunately, time had not been so kind to the precious contents contained within. Tesla's lost journals revealed that in 1899, while in Colorado Springs, Tesla intercepted communications from extraterrestrial beings who were secretly controlling mankind. These creatures were slowly preparing humans for eventual conquest and domination using a program that had been in place since the creation of humankind but was now accelerating due to Earth's increased scientific awareness. Now this is where it starts to get into spookism and you will realize that the same people who murdered Tesla and confiscated all of his valuable documents, that the most valuable thing they confiscated from Tesla was the voice of Tesla. So when Tesla was murdered, they were able to speak through Tesla and say, well, he said this before he died and he felt this way before he died. But you have to do your research and understand the deception. Whenever you hear extraterrestrial, that's a red flag. It's like a virus on a computer. When the red sign come up, you can go in. It may not be deception, but it's a high chance that it is. OK. I do believe in other beings, but I don't believe in outer space. I believe in inner space and I go into that in a lot of previous videos. But to stay on subject here with Tesla and the alien deception, the deceivers will accredit all of Tesla's work to aliens. As I explained previously, instead of telling us the truth that Tesla didn't receive any communications from aliens. They always want to make it like there's this one divine man who received the message from some hidden deity. In a lot of cases, they use aliens. But really, Tesla knew what the ancients knew, that energy was all around you. And because of that, Tesla would go on to prove the existence of the ether. And the ether is just another word for the ever present energy that is omnipresent at all times. We live in a world, unfortunately, that feel the need to prove that presence. So we come up with the testing of the ether and Tesla proved that there is a supreme intelligence at the root of our reality. Whereas the modern scientists wanted to exclude a deity from science like we have today in this modern matrix. And as we move on, you will see more of this deception. Nikola Tesla wrote about his years of research to interpret the strange radio signals and his attempts to notify the government and military concerning what he had learned, but his letters apparently went unanswered. Tesla spoke in confidence to several of his benefactors, including Colonel John Astor, who owned the Waldorf Astoria Hotel. These benefactors listened to Tesla and secretly funded what was to be the start of mankind's first battle to regain control of its own destiny. So why do I say that there is an alien agenda deception surrounding Nikola Tesla and the plagiarization of his inventions? Tesla was an awesome man. He was a genius, even though he rediscovered this ancient technology. It was during a modern time that was so far ahead of his time, the fact that he would re-stumble upon this ancient science that many of us are tying into modern metaphysics and all of that today. And we're interpreting this ether, this ever-present energy, this intelligence in so many ways. But it's all hidden in the world religions and heliocentrism. And Tesla knew that. You will know that as we move on and get into Tesla and flat earth. You see, why is it deception? 
to accredit Tesla's great mind to a message from aliens because it takes away the fact that he was an awesome man. If you tell me that everything he gave the world come from aliens, then they should get the credit and not Tesla. So again, it's a form of plagiarization. So what I'm about to read to you now is a quote from Nikola Tesla. And this is the quote that a lot of deceivers use today to support the idea that Tesla got all of his knowledge from aliens. And I read, my brain is only a receiver in the universe. There is a core from which we obtain knowledge, strength, and inspiration. I have not penetrated into the secrets of this core, but I know it exists. That first line was taken by deceivers to say that Tesla received his information from aliens. The fact that Tesla said his brain is only a receiver channeling information that's already in your DNA. That's already there. He didn't say he channeled it from aliens. The deceiver said that not Tesla. So again, speaking for dead men. So yes, Tesla had many documents to support that he was working on aircraft similar to that of the Hitler von Mana. And the fact that he had ties to Hitler and the Nazis shed more light on the Vimana Hitler conspiracy and show you where the little green men deception come into play. See, the little green men are who they use to hide the ancient truth all the time and to discredit the ancestors. Once we learn the ancient truth about the spiritual technology of the pyramids and the Tesla Tower and the mushroom mythology, once we realize these simple truths of nature and tap into this one divine energy source, we'll realize that paying for power is silly. The ancients would laugh. They tapped into the infinite power source that was omnipresent. Today, we ignore it and they got us deceived into world religions and pseudoscience as opposed to real science. So people like Neil deGrasse Tyson drop mics. They are not real scientists. Real scientists do experiments. They don't tell you mythological stories with a bunch of animations. And I was deceived with that type of deception. But here's a new day today. And those with eyes will see and those with ears will hear. So understand that if all of the credit was given to the ancestors, we would also begin to explore their beliefs and their cosmology and everything that made them great. And we would become great today. So they intercept that greatness by telling you the ancestors or Tesla and all of these people get the information from aliens. Once we give the information to aliens, they keep us looking up into outer space and there's nothing in outer space. It's all inner space. There is no space. There's divine energy that's omnipresent. There's a divine supreme being that's omnipresent. There's energy all around you. So they have us looking up into the stars and we've been deceived thinking that we're looking into outer space. The stars are right above your head. Nothing is separated by light years and all of this foolishness that they give us. And as we move on, you will have no choice but to realize that Tesla was indeed a flat earther. And in fact, his technology he used is only possible on a flat earth where we can bounce signals over vast distances and that signal will not be disturbed by any curvature. The cell tower technology is Tesla technology that rules our world today. They tell you they got satellites in outer space, but the only picture you ever saw of a satellite was a painting or computer generated image. You never saw a real picture of one. Therefore you believe in something that don't exist other than their matrix. The truth is everything wireless in our world today is achieved by Tesla's technology and ancient technology. These towers are divine and you will see them all in ancient art and they are misinterpreting the literature to this art and got you thinking the ancients were some dummies when really they are recreating their matrix with the ancient sciences and hiding them with aliens. So while you go to be deceived in their schools, Tesla knew the ancient truth. 
understand that most scholars acknowledge that Tesla's obscurity is partially due to his eccentric ways and fantastic claims during the waning years of his life of communicating with other planets and death rays. So when they was killing this man slowly, everyone get old, but if you research you will understand he died of asphyxiation, and I will get into that in a minute, but he was clearly murdered. And uh, they had been working on it a while. The very people he was trusting was killing him. So they were speaking for him the whole while they were doing so. Because if they really spoke for the voice of Tesla today, everyone would have free energy. That is the vision of Tesla. But the vision of the aliens that they give you keeps their matrix going and their world of consumerism going where we are enslaved. So it is now known that many of these fantastic inventions of Tesla are scientifically accurate and workable. It has simply taken mankind this long to catch up to the astonishing ideas of a man who died in 1943. So now we're going to go deep into the rabbit hole and we're going to talk about Nikola Tesla, flat earth, electromagnetism, the tides and the Schumann resonance. And a lot of this information is going to be coming from a great website called a plain truth.info. I learn a lot from their website and from their YouTube channel. So if you want to learn from them like I have, then visit the description links a plain truth.info. Very thorough research. So now we're going to continue. Is all of space an electromagnetic plasma field? Is this what the dome that encapsulated Earth made of? So now that we know space doesn't exist, I would like to suggest we not look at space based on boundaries, lines and vacuums, but rather as one continuous area that loses density as it ascends from the surface of the Earth outward. In the research paper Tesla and the Ether by Eugene Mallow, Nikola Tesla referred to the luminiferous ether. So what did Tesla think about the ether? For that matter, what did Tesla think of electricity? We must remember that when the 19th century Tesla worked, the ether was inextricably connected with the concept of electricity. In addition to its being the medium of the transmission of light and other Hertzian electromagnetic waves. The idea of particles of electricity later to be discovered and then called electrons was not yet in vogue. Electricity was thought of as something like an intangible fluid, literally etheric. In a seminal talk before the American Institute of Electrical Engineers in May 1891 at what was then called Columbia College in New York City, Tesla spoke these telling words. Of all the forms of nature's immeasurable, all-pervading energy, which ever and ever change and move like a soul animates an innate universe, electricity and magnetism are perhaps the most fascinating. We know that electricity acts like an incompressible fluid, that there must be a constant quantity of it in nature that it can neither be produced or destroyed, and that electricity and ether phenomena are identical. Ladies and gentlemen, that is a very powerful quote from a very powerful man, and it makes you begin to re-question your reality. Tesla knew the earth was flat, and you're going to understand even more why I say that as we move on. First of all, when we talk about electricity, in one of its most purest natural forms, we talk about lightning. Everyone know that lightning strikes from the ground up. Now, that's a whole nother video we can get into. A lot of people can't probably grasp that idea when you first hear it. But when you study it, it's very understandable. And you can look at it this way. The earth emits electromagnetism. And just like the human body does the same. There's a static energy of ever-present ethereal energy that's ever-present and empowers every molecule that makes up existence. And Tesla was aware of this divine science and began to create technology based on that fact of nature. 
Today we are ruled based on that fact of nature, whereas Tesla wanted to take that fact to free humanity. So keep that in mind, Tesla said that electricity and ether phenomena are identical. Tesla noted that this ether was everywhere moving and dynamic in the salvation of humankind. He also stated with the power derived from it with every form of energy obtained without effort from stores forever inexhaustible, humanity will advance with giant strides. Nikola Tesla was unrivaled for his innate understanding of the natural laws that govern the earth. First and foremost is the aether and within that ether is the existence of electromagnetic fields that interconnect all species of life to the earth's frequency or what's known as the Schumann frequency. So if you want to research more on that, you can start looking into the Schumann frequency and you can look up more on what Nikola Tesla thought about the ether. But basically, again, it's the ever present energy, the divine intelligence that governs all things. Tesla developed technology to tap into that energy and we was able to utilize it in wireless forms. And not only that, but also he had the knowledge and the know-how to provide humanity with an endless supply of energy. So us paying for power, that concept wouldn't even exist if this man's vision would have been brought to fruition. But of course, we can see his works and documents were intercepted and used to create consumers instead of liberated human beings. So now we're about to get into something very profound and I stumbled across this. This is a Facebook note. Shout out to Faith Dyson, the person who created this Facebook note that I'm about to read. This is a very interesting post. Link to it is in the description section. So the name of this note is titled How Tesla Proved the Earth is Flat and Alive and Conscious at the Same Time. People can debate flat earth versus global earth all they want to, but Nikola Tesla already proved that globe earth is the true matrix. And not only that, but that the earth is alive and conscious as well. He did this by simply recording and decoding mother nature's heartbeats. They're known as the Schumann resonances and our circadian rhythms. So another way to look at this, when we talk about mother nature's heartbeats in a circadian rhythm is to think of the tides. Think of the ocean tides. Think of how the waters come in and out, low tide, high tide, and how to, when you're at the beach, even how the um, waves come to shore and they come back in. It's like an inhale and an exhale because the tides are linked to this rhythm. It's an inhale and an exhale and there's a suction type vortex energy in the center of the earth. And this has a lot to do with the inhale and exhale of the oceans or what we call low tide, high tide. It's all linked to the heartbeat of mother nature. So in short, Tesla proved that mother nature is omnipresent, omniscient and omnipotent. This tells us three important things about ourselves and where we live. Number one, Mother Nature is a physical, infinite, flat level field. Number two, there is no other natural power besides the power of Mother Earth. And number three, all others are merely man-made frequencies of harnessed and converted and therefore perverted energy that seek to imitate, override, and replace her perfect patterns. Another way you can look at this, how they override her perfect patterns is think of a year if you look at the stars they make a circular orbit around polaris which is at the direct center of our cosmos and this is a 360 degree circle technically we should have 360 days in a year based on that rotation or that circuit and now 365 leap year is deception also that should only be 10 months we understand that 10 is Zen. And I go into that concept a lot in previous videos, so just check those out. There's only 10 months and they should end at December, which is the 10th. But what happened was two 
famous Caesars, one by the name of Julius Caesar and one by the name of Augustus inserted there two months into the calendar. And those two months became July and August. So what happened, the Greeks changed time and the way we perceive it today. And today, nobody know what time it is. And we're so lost. The concept of leap year is deception. The concept of the Copernican universe supports this deception. But I'm showing you the perfection of nature and how in our real reality, the stars make a perfect 360 degrees. We know that a circle is a perfect 360 degrees, not 365. There is no leap year and Earth is not tilted on its axis. That's blasphemy. So we got to re-question the cosmology we've been given and ask ourselves, why do we share the same cosmology as deceivers? Think not that those behind this biological coop don't understand all of the implications of this information because they do. It's you who have been kept in the dark about their meaning because they expose all activities that's not of the matrix as destructive toward our formation. Tesla just happened to come along and uncover the total human source of all of our suffering. Therefore, it was for this one momentous discovery and no other that Tesla was discredited because it also proved that the intended use of the electromagnetic field by him and by the electrically connected corporations was not only immoral, but lethal to our brains and bodies. The story goes that once Tesla realized Mother Nature's energy field was the sole source of our advanced levels of health and intelligence, including that which was his own, he refused to continue to abuse what he then knew was the only matrix for them both. So Tesla was very aware, but more than this, he was attempting to tell the public to do the same, and this is something the powers that be could not have happening. It would then have prevented the New World Order from electrically manipulating all of the material patterns of the world before it even had the chance to institute its improved method. In fact, Tesla's discovery was even threatening their old ways to do the same. For it also revealed theirs was an ancient, not a modern activity that simply toys with the electrical system of our bodies as well as our brains, by also using the old grid both inside and outside of us. Therefore, there are also many other studies that have been done on this subject, including those by the U.S. government, and all of them have also confirmed Tesla's assessment of our mutual matrix and the biological fact that it can't be played with without suffering the loss of our material patterns for health and intelligence. However, their research caused the activity of our energy, the background noise that interferes with their power and its machinery. In every sense of those terms, in the same way microwaves can interfere with the pacemaker, which means the reverse is also true. The frequencies of the man-made grid and its technology interfere with our biology, yet the government still endorses and its law now enforces the use and abuse of both Mother Nature's and our own electromagnetic field. In short, the truth is that we're all the same field of uncreated and undying energy in material form when not prevented from being so by man-made interference of the harness converted and perverted sort. By now his abusive frequencies are an ever-present deterrent to that formation despite all of Tesla's attempted warnings against them. As the result, mitochondrial genome disruption and DNA deactivation is the standard because this is the physical presence of the infinite field of the matrix within us and when her power is abused or misused on any level anywhere her whole perfect physical pattern suffers and that's called disease so the state of humanity is disease at this time as well as mother earth based on the concepts that plague the planet that is anti-mother nature and their father destruction we've been ruled through fear 
when we're supposed to be led by the facts of nature. Instead, we are indoctrinated with the theories of man and science is a form of religion that governs all world religions and lie at their foundations and mechanisms of control. So what was to be physically composed by Mother Nature's perfect resonances simply can't come into material existence when we're immersed in nothing but man-made conditions. Hence, our brain and body lose their parts until the whole fades back into frequency so thin they can't be sensed anymore by biological systems that have been robbed of the physical ability to be infinitely aware of everything. You see, there's one more fact about Mother Nature's heartbeat, which is that it also has the rate of a living, conscious, intelligent being who is always wide awake. But the loss of that all-seeing, all-knowing perception is exactly what the New World Order wants for the Matrix in her entire physical body. For then, its powers that be can instead finally become the sole source programming and machining the limited global awareness of everyone's brain and body. Their entire system is designed to make and keep people asleep in all they are, think, say, and do. The question is, do you want this happening to you? Tesla didn't, and he left some of his mother nature's resonating truth. So now we will begin to dig deeper into more information about Tesla, flat earth, electromagnetism, tides, and the Schumann resonance. And this is some information that comes from the modern Gnostic, and the website is called the geocentricgnostic.com which is an excellent website. You guys know I share a lot of people's information that do great work. With that being said, let's continue on. When we consider that the ionosphere surrounding the Earth is electrically positive charge, whilst the Earth's surface carries a negative charge, we must conclude that this amounts to a prevailing electrical tension within the Earth slash ionosphere cavity. This tension is discharged when thunderstorms develop in this cavity. In physics, two concentric electrically charged balls, one placed inside the other, are called ball condensers or capacitors. The inside of the ionosphere layer is used in wireless information transfer to bounce off radio waves emitted by transmitters on the Earth's surface. In this way, the information can be transferred over large distances. The physicist and inventor Nikola Tesla was the first to carry out wireless energy experiments at Colorado Springs, which produced such powerful electrical tensions that they resulted in the creation of artificial lightning. These lightning flashes also produced radio waves. Due to their extremely low frequency, these waves could penetrate the earth without resistance and thereby Tesla discovered the resonance frequency of the earth. Unfortunately, Tesla was before his time and his discoveries were not taken seriously. So again, Nikola Tesla had tapped into the code of infinity. He had tapped into that divine intelligence through his sciences and his technological inventions. Now what I want to share with you is the Nikola Tesla interview that was hidden for over 116 years. And the source of this information is from a website that's called BeforeIt'sNews.com. I'm very familiar with them and their work. Shout out to BeforeIt'sNews.com. They actually published one of my YouTube videos on their website. And you can check out that video in the description link as well. Now to check out this interview, it's actually pasted in the description area at the very, very bottom of everything. So just click on Show More. And you can pull up this hidden Nikola Tesla interview. And it's originally posted from beforeitsnews.com. I'm not going to read that interview because, guys, it's a very long interview. But I recommend that you guys go and check that interview out. But basically, the interview took place in 1899. And it was rarely ever published for over 100 years. In it, Tesla pulls no punches and reveals the great conspiracy of science that was well underway. The suppression of ether and the introduction of a new fake science to conceal it as well as to suppress the work of Tesla himself. So Tesla was trying to tell humanity that 
the elites was coming with this new fake science that was going to basically hide God. When we talk about the ether, we're talking about the ever present energy force around us that controls and governs everything in the cosmology that rules today's modern world. There is no ether and there is no supreme deity that we all should know in our hearts really exist. Why doesn't it exist in our sciences? And that will explain why the foundation of all of our sciences is theory. And that the root word of theory is theo. Theo means God. Gods are also guides. Science is guiding humanity into perpetual chaos. The gods that rule your science and your philosophy and shape the perception of the collective consciousness creates chaos and disconnects us from any source. But Tesla was going to do away with that. Nikola Tesla who was an admitted flat earther. And if you want to compare him to Neil deGrasse Tyson, there is no comparison. He was a real scientist who did experiments. Tesla didn't just drop microphones. He tapped into the truth of his reality. One understanding of the basic truth of your reality is understanding the cosmology. Tesla wouldn't have been able to create none of these inventions if the earth were a globe. Once in 1899, Nikola Tesla had an interview with a certain journalist. That journalist was named John Smith. Tesla said in this interview, and I quote, everything is the light and one of its rays is the fate of nations. Each nation has its own ray in that great light source, which we see as the sun. In this interview, this greatest inventor and seer of modern time unravels a new vision of humanity, which we, the light warriors of the first and the last hour, have created a century later. Part of this interview is dedicated to Tesla's critics on Einstein's theory of relativity that discards the ether as energy. So understand that Albert Einstein is an imposter. And if he was alive, he would tell you out of his own mouth that Nikola Tesla was the man and he was nothing but a shield. Tesla proved in the new theory of the universal law why Einstein's theory of relativity is entirely wrong and why there is no vacuum or void or what we're calling space and that everything is energy. Thus, I confirm Tesla's ideas as expressed in this interview. And again, that interview is pasted in a description area at the very bottom. The embezzlement of Tesla's capitalization went unchecked throughout Tesla's career. At the time of his death, which was by murder, according to Scorzini, on January 6, 1943, Tesla died virtually penniless. Among a number of other highly significant revelations, Berman heard from Scorzini that he had personally suffocated Nikola Tesla on January 6, 1943, assisted by fellow Nazi Reinhard Gellin. Tesla was then 86 years old. According to Scorzini, he and Gellin had tricked Tesla the previous day into revealing the full details of his most important discoveries. After the murder, they stole the contents of Tesla's safe, which were delivered to Hitler. Note, of course, that the U.S. military would have fully repatriated this treasure trove of innovation through Project Paperclip at the end of the war. So before I move any further, in order to understand how deep this rabbit hole goes, you must understand what Project Paperclip is.
So understand that Nikola Tesla was ruined by the elite and then murdered to stop him from giving free energy to the world. On Good Friday, Orthodox Christmas Eve, Tesla was found in bed dressed in solemn black suit, arms folded on his chest. They say that a great mind like Tesla's felt that his death was coming, so he put on the solemn black suit and then he died. That's an incredible lie and a mission that's impossible even for a great mind as Nikola Tesla. What this is, is the ultimate proof that he was murdered and his killers dressed him in a suit and left him in the bed. Nikola Tesla's success in discovering new technologies did not go unnoticed by many industrial capitalists and world governments. In fact, many of his inventions were developed through secret government programs which began soon after his discoveries in alternating current, electromagnetic energy, electric motors, generators, coils, radio transmission, energy saving devices, and wireless transmission technologies. Since Tesla was often buried deep in research at remote labs, Many of his financial and legal affairs were supervised by his closest associate, George H. Scherf. Scherf often advised Tesla about pending patent litigation, contracts, proposals, demonstrations, and financial affairs. As any trusty associate would, Scherf stood beside Tesla through all the ups and downs of his financial nightmares, sometimes arranging for extended credit at the Waldorf Astoria, where Tesla often resided, or by obtaining a cash advance toward research he had been contracted to perform. As Tesla worked on secret U.S. government projects at Colorado Springs, Colorado, Scherf communicated to Tesla the status of his business affairs. Tesla spoke of hopeful future financial successes, though Scherf repeatedly delivered the news of dwindling funds. Tesla had begun construction of a wireless power transmission tower, the Wardenclyffe Tower, and this construction was made possible with funds invested by J.P. Morgan. When Morgan discovered that the tower would transmit free electricity and radio waves, he canceled the project and had the tower dismantled, then sold for scrap. Morgan was not about to allow Americans to receive free electricity, television, and radio. So you got to stop for a minute, brothers and sisters, and think about what Tesla was trying to do and why he was such a threat and why his technology and his research had to be confiscated and he was done away with. This is a very heartbreaking story that sheds a lot of light on how the matrix we see today was achieved. So when J.P. Morgan canceled the project and began to attempt to take advantage of Tesla and basically destroy the man tesla was of course devastated when he received the news but continued on with his new inventions you got to understand that the bush family did a lot of stealing from the works of tesla and a lot of their legacies and million dollar billion dollar enterprises would not be possible without a lot of tesla's inventions and stuff that they stole from tesla the rockefellers and we're talking about the Morgans and you can see who was investing in them. And you can read more about this whole connection by visiting the description area. Basically, the, the elites took advantage of the guy. Samuel P. Bush's association with the Rockefellers and his subsequent position as director of the War Industries Board afforded him the opportunity to create contracts with Remington Arms during the war courtesy of Percy Rockefeller. Tesla's trusted assistant, George Scherf Sr., worked at Union Sulphur Company. So this guy, Nikola Tesla's trusted assistant or his accountant, this guy kept up with Nikola Tesla's money and his finances, but this guy also worked for the Rockefellers and the Bushes. He worked for their sulphur company. So, of course, there was a lot of deception going on and Tesla being the man he is, he was immersed in his work and really just wanted to bring innocent change about the world. But one thing that got Tesla was he trusted the wrong people. He had the wrong people around him. Again, whether people failed to support this great man, 
it opened the door for snakes. If there was millions of people of the public putting our monies behind great men, we can change our situation without marching to D.C. when we know nothing is going to get changed from the higher ups. We can change our situations if we come together and help those that's taking the first steps. But when that doesn't happen, we see the fate of Tesla is very sad. So who was George Scherf? Better yet, who was George H. Scherf Sr.? There exists no legitimate record of a George H. Scherf being born in the U.S. from the late 1800s through 1925. Yet George Scherf was Nikola Tesla's assistant slash accountant. So they basically erased this man from history to hide this deception. Because what you got to understand is that Scherf was Tesla's accountant and Scherf worked for those who was supposedly backing Tesla financially. And that's a conflict of interest, people. So normally this association would not set off alarms considering the state of Tesla's affairs. Scherf had every right to earn a decent living in order to support his family. But a careful examination of Union Sulphur Company might reveal that someone was being deceived, Tesla. And Scherf was at the root of this deception. So there's only one photograph in public circulation that records the face of George Scherf Sr. And this is at the Association of Radio Engineers Banquet of 1915. The picture you are looking at now is the picture we are discussing. This is the only photograph in public circulation of this guy's face. So Tesla is seen standing tallest in the middle of the back row. While Scherf stands at the end of the same row to Tesla's left, his hands visible at his sides. So you can pause this or do whatever you like to pinpoint George Scherf. But we're going to move on. So on January 4, 1943, Tesla's faithful accountant, George Scherf, visited Tesla for the last time. Tesla was found deceased in his hotel room on the morning of January 8, 1943. He had passed away between those four days since Scherf's visit. The article continued, following Tesla's death, the United States Office of Alien Property, under the instructions of the FBI, confiscated all of Tesla's papers and property. This was an interesting maneuver considering that Tesla was a United States citizen and not an alien. And this is also strange considering that most of Tesla's technology is being attributed to literal aliens. This word alien is very, very deep and this deception is very, very intricate. And to go more into detail on the Scorzini and the George Scherf connection, visit the description area. The significance of this benign description of Tesla's inventions and his last days has a direct relationship to the previously unknown claims of Otto Scorzini. As Scorzini described in detail his involvement with George H.W. Bush and George H. Scherf Jr. in organizing the CIA by absorbing Nazi SS agents, he intimated that it was Reinhard Gellin and himself who murdered Nikola Tesla by strangulation slash suffocation. Prior to the murder, Scorzini and Gellin spoke in great detail to Tesla about his most advanced technologies and then stole the blueprints of his best, most secret inventions. Were these the two U.S. government agents about whom Dustin Wallace wrote? The timing of George Scherf's last visit to Nikola Tesla was suspicious as well. Scorzini did not stop with these soul cleansing disclosures. He went on to describe the aliases of himself, Frank Edward P. of South Florida, according to Berman, who claims he is trying to protect Scorzini's daughter. According to Berman, Gellin was tipped off by the FBI about Scorzini's unveiling of his identity and location and Gelling then went into hiding. Having investigated some of Scorzini's claims, Berman had contacted the U.S. Justice Department to inform them that Nazi spies were being harbored by certain factions of the U.S. intelligence agencies, in particular the CIA. 
My thoughts were that I needed to try to bring these wanted SS Nazi war criminal Holocaust killers basically to justice. I wanted to call our government and tell them, hey, that they're still alive. I wanted to bring them to justice. I initially had contacted or tried to contact Eli Rosenbaum, who was the director of the U.S. Justice Department Office of Special Investigations. Basically, they thought it was a hoax and they told me that I was mistaken and that according to the CIA, all of them were all dead and I was mistaken. They told me I was wrong. And in my opinion, um, I believe that they knew the truth and just was continuing to hide it when we understand the type of deceivers we're dealing with. So it seems that whenever someone talks about Tesla, you can't help but wonder how it is possible for a man like Tesla to go on unnoticed in history books. Why is someone like Tesla literally erased from history? Why is his legacy pushed out of society? If it weren't for this man, things like smartphones, radio, remote control devices, and etc. would be something completely unknown to us. So again, Tesla wanted to liberate humanity, but unfortunately all of his technology and inventions were plagiarized and confiscated and used to create a matrix of modern consumers. So Tesla wanted to create a better human. He had discovered knowledge and as a result created technology that was ahead of his time. And by creating the technology, he also learned that the human being was the real technology and he would use his technology to batter the earth and batter the human being rather than exploit the human being like the people who destroyed him are doing today to maintain their matrix and to hide this ancient knowledge that tesla had tapped into so today we know nothing but we own everything we're still not happy. We don't know our place in the cosmos or even while we were born. We don't care about questions like this anymore. We don't even care about the shape of the earth. Many people tell me it doesn't matter because they don't understand their connection to the creation. Tesla taught that any attempts to explain the workings of the cosmos without noticing the ether was pointless. These are things that was always in my heart before I even knew Tesla said these things, which show that we all end up at the same place when we are sincere in our spirit and remain on a quest for truth. Because when I was putting together this video and researching, I come to find out that I have so much in common with Tesla and that a lot of his philosophies, I came to those conclusions on my own. And what I learned in making this video from Tesla is that we all will reach that place. And what makes Tesla a genius is his understanding of Mother Nature and his respect for it. He don't try to redefine reality. He simply tries to understand it for what it is. Unlike modern science that redefine it with theory after theory until they create a reality that is far from the truth. With everything that's been said, I have to let you guys go because this already have been an extensive video, but I hope you guys enjoyed it and I hope you guys hit the like button and I hope you share it and subscribe if you haven't already. Like Tesla, Brother Sanchez is just a simple, humble man trying to understand reality and play my part in creating that reality that would please the source of all. So before I get out of here, I have to shout out my family of patrons. So with no further ado, let me give a big shout out to my brother P.E. Poppin' Pat, that's Patrick Emery. Let me give a shout out to my brother Alistair Edwards. Let me give a shout out to my brother Jamal Wimbush. Let me give a shout out to my sister Capricia Woods. And let me give another shout out to none other than my brother from the UK, Andy McCrory. Listen, I really appreciate you guys. These are my family of patrons. They help make it possible for me to continue to do what I'm doing. 
So if you guys like what I do on this channel, you like to show your support in a very small way, then join our family of patrons. So if you're interested, that link will be in the description area. Go ahead and go over to the Patreon page and read over it and check out all of the rewards. So I'm going to let y'all go. Thanks again for joining in. And remember, new uploads every Thursday. Peace, 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 peace and much peace, love. love, 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 love. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video presentation. If you did, please subscribe to my YouTube channel, like the video, and share it on your favorite social media sites. There's a lot more to come, so stay tuned and we'll see you back next time.